Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Concept Tuckamore. At least that's how I'm going to pronounce it. I think we can actually see the name of the knife right there. Looks like I'm probably accurate. This is one of the more interesting designs I've seen here lately from Concept Knives and it is available right now in a few different forms. The price on it is also very good. I'm going to go over all of that here today. I will link this knife right down below and all of the different variants that are available. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to Concept for sending this in. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I think it's important to note because we kind of expect Concept Knives to come out in um, S35VN. This is CPM 20 CV, which is Pretty cool. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know how they're heat treating it exactly because it's not listed on their website or any of the other, uh, you know, the retailer's uh, website, like the standard ones that we always see. I'm gonna guess it's the typical 59 to 61, but in the future concept knives, it would be cool if at least on your website, you list the Rockwell hardness. We would all very much like to know the vast majority of us do not have the appropriate equipment that's required to test the Rockwell hardness. Um, let's go ahead and measure the knife. So overall length is coming. There's debris all over the place today. What is this? The overall length of the Tuckamore is coming in at eight inches. So full size knife, at least by my definition, blade length. I'm going to call that 3.6 cutting edge, 3.35. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. Any custom scales you can find down in the description under original goat, like on this 80, 20, uh, or I'm sorry, 80, 10 or flitanium. Uh, and then also up against the Demco 8020.5. So you can see here, it's a it's a full size knife. It's just not huge like the 8010. Uh, let's go ahead and put it up against the Spyderco uh, PM2. Sorry, out of order today. And the Spyderco Para 3. So a little bit shorter than the Spyderco PM2. And then last but not least, let's put it up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. And maybe the Benchmade bug out would be a good one there too. Very similar in overall size and ergonomic, the, the ergonomic uh, handle position or the, the finger positions are very similar uh, to the Ritter Hogue as well. How's the action? The action's very good. It's about what you'd expect from other concept knives. So we have a huge uh, access hole. <laughs> Still looking for a better way to say that folks. So give me your suggestions. Very uh, easy access to that thumb hole there so you can easily thumb flick it out you can reverse flick it out it's really nice anybody who's familiar with spider co knives i mean this is you're gonna feel right at home here uh access there is very very good whoops missed it there access to the lock bar which is in my opinion equally important is also very nice you can see that that's been carved slightly lower on the show side and it drops nicely to the sharpening toil area which is what i like to see the d10 is also tuned just about right to get the right amount of leverage uh from the point of manipulation. How about that? How about carry profile thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3? It's about the same. Length and height up against the PM2 and the Para 3. This guy is going to be a little bit larger than the Para 3, a little shorter than the PM2, but not quite as tall, meaning it will carry pretty nicely in the pocket. Materials. We have titanium, and I really like this material. I always talk about it. It's copper carbon fiber, and I just like how it looks. I'm not sure how well it's contrasting with the pivot color here. Um, concept, I think this would have looked better had you gone no pivot color, a silver pivot color, or a copper pivot color. We've got some sort of gold, but okay. I mean, that's pretty nitpicky, right? I just really like how we have the contrast of the matte gray and black of the carbon fiber with the really shiny copper. Not everybody's going to like this stuff. And if you don't like this stuff, that's perfectly fine because it comes in a few different configurations with slightly varying price, right? Well, I say slightly. There's a good, a good $40 range, I think maybe $45 range between the different variants. But this is one of the least expensive variants, which is pretty cool. I like how this looks and it really... It busies up the design in a good way because this would otherwise be a fairly boring profile. So I appreciate the fact that there is an inlay and that the inlay is something interesting, at least that you have that option for people who kind of like the same thing as me. So anyways, copper carbon fiber, tart uh, tartarium, titanium, and CBM 20 CV, which is uh, pretty nice. That's nice. How about internal milling? I, I doubt it because of the inlays. No, no internal milling. 
Wait. This knife. Come on. There we go. Weighs 3.7 ounces. That's a pretty good weight. It's a very balanced weight considering how much blade we have. The actual balance of the knife is right in the middle of the primary index finger position, which is where you want it if you care. If you don't care, then who cares? But uh, yeah, very nicely balanced. Let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness just because the uh, calipers are right here and I'm, I'll definitely lose them if I don't do it now. Uh, 117, no, 115, really? Gosh, it doesn't look that thin, does it? Yeah, okay, we're coming in at 117 thousandths, okay. Just fine. Nice and, uh, you know, on the thinner side of things. Let's go ahead and get out my tools and do a hardware check. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. The pivot is going to be a T8. The body screws are T6. And there's also a screw to hold in the inlay. I don't really care too much about that, but some people do. So you have two screws on each side, a couple of standoffs here. We got a screw for the pocket clip that's hidden, right? No mounting position for lefties, which is a bummer, but okay. Um, really fairly minimal hardware and it's, it's T6. I wish it was T8, but no big deal. It should be pretty easy to take apart. As long as you have the right tools for the job, uh, you should be good to go. I think we're actually ready to move into the meat and potatoes here. The main reason I like this um, design a little bit more than other concept knives is because everything makes sense. It looks good, it feels good, it feels natural, uh, and it's very easy to manipulate. On top of that, this is a very utilitarian blade shape. I've always said that blade styles, it's not anything specific. Like I love a good drop point blade. You know, In fact, there's, there's uh, blades that I think look substantially better than this, but as, as far as function goes day to day, I like a blade where the tip is down. It drops down towards the edge. Why? Because the cuts that I find myself doing a lot are draw cuts um, or precision, like if I'm trying to cut something out, right? And that's just way cooler than using scissors. So don't tell me to use scissors. <laughs> but yeah, I like that. And you'll still have a nice edge for slicing. Obviously, a straight edge like this isn't going to be nearly as good uh, when it comes to slicing as something that it has a little more belly to it, right? But you still have the tip for puncturing. You still have an edge for slicing, general cutting. And then you've got that nice, oh, that's real comfortable right there, kind of choking up using the middle finger, using the index finger here and doing your draw cuts. I like that a lot. And it's a good size, so everything feels very comfortable. Ergonomically, it's pretty good. This is, it's a, it's, it's contoured and the edges are somewhat abrupt, but still, you know, knocked down enough that it's not sharp. And the pocket clip is milled and also contoured. So that means it's not a hot spot. You can tell that it's there, but it's not like, oh my gosh, you know, this is going to destroy my hands if I use this barehanded. Um, I think the lock bar could have been knocked down just a little bit more. You can see it's scalloped, but then there's this other sort of, ledge right there that's a, that's a little bit abrupt but it's not nothing here is really bothering my fingers in any way so i'm appreciative of that um it says cbm 20 cv and then we have this long code which concept loves i'm you're gonna have to excuse me if i say kaiser i i say you know i get those mixed up sometimes but concept loves to put these big long codes on their knives and while it is really really tiny i just don't understand why we have to do that i also don't understand why we have to have the name of the knife on the knife we just don't need to do that you know presumably if you bought it you're going to know what it is the uh designer's logo is up here and i am unfamiliar with this logo unless this is an in-house logo right which some companies are coming out with i'm not familiar with all of them but that's the designer logo there they squeezed in their logo right here. I think Concept should find a way to start putting their logo on the pivot. A lot of other companies have started to do this, and it just looks better. Some people are not going to care, but the, the people who do care, care I don't want to speak for all of you, but I, I feel like a lot of you will agree with me that it, it's a lot of times it's better to put your logo on the pivot or somewhere that really you know doesn't draw away from what we're trying to accomplish with the blade here. And I mean, let's be honest, if you're buying knives in this territory, you care about how it looks and you probably don't like the billboarding as much. So this isn't the worst offense I've ever seen by a long shot. I just think it would be a good idea if we found a different place to put the logo. It's kind of neat that they didn't keep this entire area open. They closed it off with a thin piece of, well, it's just part of the blade there. Uh, it's kind of neat, right? It gave them space to put their logo there, and I think it would have looked a lot cooler if the logo wasn't there, but okay. We have a flat that carries out maybe 80% the length of the blade. A little swedge here, and then it drops down towards the tip. This isn't a super you know, thick blade stock to begin with, um, but it is you know, 
kind of an aggressive, not an aggressive taper. It's just, it doesn't have a whole lot of room to drop at the angle that they did it at. So the end result is kind of a medium thickness edge. It'll still cut, slice, poke, do all those things that you need it to do. It's just not going to be, you know, if you perform surgery on grapes, uh, it's probably not going to be the blade. But as far as just general cutting performance out of the box, we'll test something like paper, which doesn't prove very much. You can see there, it does just fine, right? But not the, not the open L slicer that some people want all knives to be. Um, we have, uh, like I said, just a couple of standoffs here. No lanyard hole. I don't, not many people care anymore. No position for lefties. We really need to have some option for lefties and not just ignore them. Uh, that's just, you know, what we're looking at here. Uh, I do like that the overlay covers the vast majority of the lock bar. I always prefer that. It's nice to just not have to worry about where your hands are and whether or not they're putting unnecessary pressure on that lock bar while you're trying to disengage it or open it and close it. I just really, really like designs like this that do this. There's a steel lock bar insert that doubles as the over travel stop. Alongside this inlay of carbon fiber here, your other options for inlays, I think they have like a toxic carbon fiber, like with green. They've got just plain micarta, maybe one other, right? You also have options for either a black wash blade or a satin blade. I think maybe one of them is just a simple tumbled finish, which would be my preference. There is a uh, stop pin that's actually attached to the blade. You can see it in there riding on either side of the titanium and little channels. I think that's fine. Nice stability on lockout while maintaining good action that way. So we have completely and totally solid lockout. No lock stick, no double clutch, no pivot lash, consistent action in here. A reasonable detent about medium. And then we have perfect centering with no detent lash. This is a pretty straightforward knife. Um, the base price of this knife, and they all come in, I think Blade HQ lists it as M390, but it is T CPM 20 CB, unless they have changed it since they sent these samples, um, or this sample here. Um, but assuming they're hitting at least the bare minimum acceptable range, right, which is 5961. I mean, I don't like a 59 hardness uh, 20 CB blade. I'd prefer that it was 60 to 62, but okay, right? Assuming they're hitting that minimum range, um, the base price of this knife is 180 bucks. It is made in China, but that's pretty competitive. Yes, there are companies out there doing um, things like this with the same materials for a little less, but are they hitting that uh, that Rockwell hardness? I've seen a lot of companies selling on Amazon and they're like, wow, look at this. We can do this for $120. And then it ends up being that their M390 is like 56, which is an absolute joke. If you're new to the knife world, don't get fooled by that stuff. It's not just what the numbers and letters say on the blade. And the composition might actually be M390. But if they're not at least giving it a decent uh, Rockwell hardness then you don't have anything special there, right? I mean, essentially, you paid for something that will perform likely worse than mediocre 440C, which is a steel that you can find on knives that cost $30, right? So that's that. It's not a win. That's, that's just a company charging you less because they didn't take the extra steps required to get the blade heat treated properly. As Laren Thomas rightfully says, Laren Thomas is a metal or just the guy behind uh, magna cut geometry plays a way bigger role in cutting performance than um composition or rock wall hardness but it's the combination of those three elements that creates a you know a, a blade that will actually perform well so rock wall hardness and composition are still important but you have to in order to have that final element you really have to make sure that it's heat treated properly I have faith that Concept is doing that. I would just like to know what it is, right? So, assuming it's hitting that minimum range that we expect, would, but prefer would be a little better, I think the base price of 180 bucks is pretty good. This version of it is $8 more, 188 bucks for this, right? I don't think that's bad at all. I think this is a recommendable knife, and I think Concept has done a good job with it. So, in, in my opinion, this is a good knife. I like it. It's not blowing me away. It's not blowing me out of my socks. It's not doing anything we haven't seen before. Um, but it's a good release. If this is, you know, potentially your first premium knife purchase, you wouldn't be making a bad choice picking this knife up. I would look around. I mean, Concept has a ton of knives in their own lineup that are, you know, fairly similar, but this would be a good option, I think. So it's going to go in my recommended knives playlist. 
Definitely one that I enjoyed. Thanks so much to Concept for sending it in. Like I said, I'll link this knife down in the description. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.